Welcome to the Non-Essential Podcast. I'm Steve Gibson. Hello. Hello. I can't help but notice that every week, like, I start off like, hey, welcome, and I'm happy. And then when I say who I am, it's clear that I'm not. And then you get like, a good sense a of my, yeah, you get a sense of my self-esteem levels. And it's like, hey, welcome to the show. I'm Steve fucking Gibson still. Yeah, like, I'll, I'll wake up and, like, I'll, it's kind of like, I'll wake up and I'll hear, like, a nice, like, guitar riff, like the opening theme to my movie or some shit. And then when I get to, like, the bathroom and see myself in the mirror, it's like, oh, fuck. Him again. <laughs> yeah, every morning, yeah. Whatever the fucking record scratches and flies off and you know you're in <laughs> for some bullshit again. What's that term, like, body dysmorphia, where, like, your mental image of yourself is way different than, like, your actual image of yourself? I think it's uh, just knowing so- my enemy. Yeah. <laughs> Anyway, hey, we're uh, here again. Yeah, I'm, uh, yeah, we're I'm, back. I'm Ben Mylock, by the way. Uh, yeah. and I'm drinking soda pop. I'm drinking water, so I don't know what happened to us. Like, yeah. when the show started out, we were always like, oh, we're fucking, tr- like, Booza. slamming down. Yeah, I'm on my eighth beer. Yeah. Um, I can never like, drink yeah. that much when we were doing the show. This, I, we I st- we started this yeah. show right when I was becoming lame as fuck. Yeah, <laughs> wow. Yeah. I've I've been that way since eighty two, so I don't know yeah. what to tell you. Yeah, it was like it was but. about like it was after, you know, fifteen years of every time trying to take a sip of beer, I would hit my teeth with the bottle. <laughs> but I decided I'm not gonna do that anymore. <laughs> yeah. You're the guy at the bar I'm picturing like everybody else like Haps backwards, bros drinking, you know, Bud yeah. Lights or whatever. And then it gets to you, and I didn't know you were drinking craft beers, but you have to like create crazy straw. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, my mouth's like wired shut now from all the fucking yeah. tooth damage. Yeah. So uh, yeah, uh, on this show we don't drink anymore. It's a it's a sober show. It's very sterile and sober and boring and bad. Uh. But yeah, on the show we tell each other stories, and the challenge is to not die by the end. So, good luck. Good luck to me. It's <laughs> I'm in the hot seat. <laughs> my seat's like room temperature. So, well, let me. It is my week, and I do have a topic that is not a creepy pasta. So we're keeping the keeping the train rolling. God damn it. I want you to fold um, so I can fold. And mostly I'm just stalling because fucking Google Drive did what I said it always fucking does. And even though I was signed in fine before we recorded, when I flipped back to it, it was like, you need to sign in again. <laughs> but uh, I'm prepared now. I've got my stuff up. So Dina Sanichar. Oh, you're going to love this. There's a bunch of names and words and places I'm not going to be able to fucking say, too, by the way. So, so Sanichar Cla- sounds like a Pokemon. Yeah, it's a classic Steve episode. So Dina Sanachar was born in India, uh, but nobody is quite sure when. That is because there are no records of his life prior to February 1867, when a group of hunters near Bolashandar, India, discovered the young boy in a cave living among wolves. He was believed to be about six years old at the time he was found. So this is a jungle um, book. Mm. Yeah, actually, I didn't end up like I forgot to put that at the end of my notes, but um, a lot of people think that he is literally the inspiration for what is it, Mogwai or whatever, yeah. um, the Jungle Book. Yeah. So after being taken back to the city and presented to William Lowe, who was a local magistrate, um, which also gives you a little peek into like the history of India, where it's like, oh, he's found in this little province in <laughs> India and taken to the most <laughs> English name you can fucking think of, who oh, is yeah, he's the taken to Constable Bobbert. <laughs> right. Um, so this was in the the fun English occupation of India phase of history, um, which every I think country has a English occupation phase at one point or another. Yeah. Um. But after he was taken to the magistrate and then was sent to live in the Segundra Orphanage in Agra. Uh, I mentioned these names in case, like, you or listeners familiar with India. Is from, are from um, there? Yeah, yeah. 
but uh, I'm probably saying them all wrong because I'm quite American, and by that I mean I'm really undereducated <laughs> and don't know shit about anywhere else other than like Central Ohio. Um, which but is, anyway, which so, is kind of the India of the United States. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> Everyone in India got really mad. They don't even listen to the show. They just felt me make that comment. I think I meant, yeah, I, I like it because like one of the stereotypes of India is at least they like tend to be really educated. No. And one of the stereotypes of Central Ohio is not that right, actively going against it, <laughs> right? Uh, and I say stereotypes, but it's not even a stereotype. I do live in one of the. I'm lucky to live in one of these states that's right there with Florida and actively fighting education because yeah, yeah like they'll pull a gun because they don't want their brain to work that good. Mm -hmm. So anyway, the orphanage named the boy Dina Sanachar. Of course, that wasn't his. Birth Nobody knows his birth name. Um, but apparently that was because Sanachar means Saturday. And that was the day that he arrived at the orphanage. So, like, they're not even trying with these kids. They're just like, fuck mm. it, you're Saturday. Uh, you know what? That's not bad, though. No, yeah. and that's at least a good day. Like, it's better than being Monday. Yeah. Like. Like, they fucking uh, called that girl Wednesday Adams. Like, right. That sucks. Although, Wednesday, I mean, there's worse days than Wednesdays. I, I, yeah, but. You know what? Fuck all five of them. Fuck, yeah, fuck really. all those. And Sunday can fuck off too, because it's just sitting there reminding you about shit. I don't know if I'm like getting dementia in my old age um, at forty-one, <laughs> or if it's just like the drag of having the same job for like twenty years. But it's getting really fucking hard to tell what day of the week it is. Yeah, like I, I, I literally yesterday or no it was today this morning like i literally thought it was both wednesday and friday and it was neither of those days <laughs> it's thursday yeah. um so anyway uh and I don't, I don't know where the fuck dina came from and i'm it's probably like pronounced differently but uh yeah, it means day spell dina day yeah, saturday maybe that's kind of like a gumshoe detective name that's like, yeah hell yeah which is exactly where the story's going now um Wolf detective. So, Dina, of course, was what was known as a feral child, which is much like a feral cat or a feral badger, except instead of being a badger or a cat, it's a child. Yeah. Um, <laughs> apparently, Dina was not the only feral kid at this particular orphanage, which begs the question, what the fuck was going on in the city of Bulldozer in the state of <laughs> Uttar Pradesh in the city of India? What's going on in there, too? <laughs> And it sucks when I tried to, like, when I looked up, because I was like, in the article, it just kept saying that he was from Bulandashar, I think is how it's actually pronounced. But it would say Bulandashar, Uttar Pradesh, India. I'm like, wait, what? That's four fucking, like, things. What? And so Bulandashar, whatever, is the, the city, but it said, used to be known as Bana. And I'm like, fuck, keep that name. <laughs> I can say Bana. <laughs> you think you can say Bana. Yeah, it was like Biana. You're, Biona, missing, or, you're missing know. like fucking eighteen consonants. I always say it, and I think it sounds stupid to say, but like there's certain languages. Like I, I started like teaching myself Japanese. Um, I know a decent amount of Spanish because I took that forever in school. Um, and even like I at one point in my life, I was trying to teach myself Russian. And so there's certain languages that I at least understand, like the sounds. Yeah. <laughs> The various languages of uh, India are not the, <laughs> one of the languages that uh, and like Germany gives or German gives me a hard time because there's so many fucking like consonants in a row in their words. I, but anyway, so yeah, I might at least struggle <laughs> with any of these Indian places. So. Um, but anyway, the point was he was not only like not the only feral kid from the area, but like not the only feral kid in this orphanage at this time. In fact, one article said like they had so many that like when a new one came in, they were just like, yeah, add them to the group. Yeah. <laughs> um, though, to be fair to this uh, city in India, feral children were not a phenomenon exclusive to them. In 1724, and I quote this, 
A hairy naked boy emerged from the woods near Hamlin, Germany. He was eventually coaxed into a trap and captured. The boy reportedly acted like a wild animal. Though, I probably fucking would too if I, like, show up in this town and they immediately trap me in a cage. <laughs> Like, yeah. I don't know. Like, they're like, he didn't act like a gentleman. It's like, well, no shit. Use your words now. Like, you, that's... you you hunted him yeah. and trapped him. <laughs> um, but, yeah, that was the point. He had no words um, and preferred to eat raw birds and raw vegetables. That's gross. Yes. And that's I mean, that's the vegetable part is. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, raw vegetable? Fuck. <laughs> what, was what it? Was a rabbit? What was that? Celery? Fuck you. <laughs> He was eventually sent to the foreigner exploitation capital of the world, and while there in England, was given the name Peter the Wild Boy. So it was just funny to me. I already talked about like England and India, and now it's like this wild, like this feral boy was caught in Germany, and they wanted him in England mm -hmm. as a show. He never learned to speak, but he reportedly loved music and was able to learn and perform, like, menial tasks. So, basically, they put him to work. Uh, he died in 1785, meaning that he lived at least into his, like, late 60s. Um, so, like, as... Not, my my not topic is... For a, jungle for a feral... Yeah, exactly. Um, it beats the average, we'll put it that way. In the in eighteen hundred, even there were multiple sightings of a naked boy living in the woods in the area of Saint Cernan Sir Rance, France. Um, and another language I <laughs> I'm not going to pretend to in, in the master. Of France, France, of France. In uh, after after years of sightings, the now teenage boy basically just emerged from the woods and rejoined civilization on his own. Uh, didn't have to capture this one in a cage. We did anyway, but we didn't. Have <laughs> right. To. We but I uh, was made the cage. So <laughs> that's the thing is he saw them like gathering the hunting parties. Like I quit. I, I hear you. Here, I'm right here. I, I've, like, I follow cops around, and when somebody tries to turn themselves in, I throw a big net on them anyway. <laughs> For a second, I thought you said a big, a big nut on them. Yeah. Like you just get off on the guy about to get. Like, I just blast. <laughs> That's hey. I mean, people have their kinks, and yours is people about to turn themselves into the yeah, cops. Yeah, people doing the right <laughs> thing really fucks me up. I... <laughs> it's it's unique. It's the one kink that you can't uh, find a website a, on. Man, it is so hard to find good atoning for my sins. Porn. porn it probably isn't it's the funniest thing <laughs> i bet it's out there in spades but uh anyway um so yeah he had kind of just like emerged from the woods one day as a teenager uh, but it's believed that he basically lived his entire like childhood life alone in the woods perhaps unsurprisingly this led to a severe cognitive impairment and he never was able to learn how to speak um, or communicate, maybe, really. But maybe that's not an impairment. Maybe his brain was working more effectively than ours. He just it's, didn't want to learn those stupid fucking languages. That's a fair point. I never feel smarter than when I don't tweet stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's like, so, yeah, maybe not talking and communicating is the most intelligent like, way to go maybe, about yeah, your life. Maybe if we shut the fuck up for a bit. We too could survive on our own, like, merits and wits. Yeah. Because I certainly fucking couldn't. No. Like, he he grew up as a child on his own in the woods. You dump my 41-year-old ass in the woods, and I'll be lucky to last, like, maybe three days. Yeah, I just keep trying to send the same fucking tweet out to the world, like, where's food, lol? <laughs> um. He became the subject of the, I guess, famous film Les Enfants Sauvages. Uh, again, I don't speak French, but I'm fairly sure that tra translates to The Savage Child. Um, so it's probably a pretty flattering biography, yeah. I'm guessing. Yeah. yeah. But he can't communicate. He doesn't understand what this movie is saying. So he's probably like, yeah, I'm a fucking star. Um, although I assume that given this, he came out of the woods in the 18, in 1800 even, he probably did not live to see this movie about him. In 1845, 
An unidentified girl was seen running on all fours among a pack of wolves as they attacked a herd of goats near San Felipe, Mexico. A year later, a different witness again observed the girl, this time devouring a freshly slain goat. That's, um, that's not being point. feral. I was, just, I was just having a hobby. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> Taking pride maybe. in what you do. There's a lot of people here that are like the survivalists, uh, you know, like Bear Grylls. Like, she just fucking... Yeah, it's like, why is that weird, but you fucking hiding in a goddamn tent with a bow for fucking 12 hours? Like, she just is in better shape than you. Right. She can like, go get that I, Again, I couldn't fucking, like, catch a goat with my bare hands and then, like, butcher the parts that are edible and eat it and live off of it. Like, I'm gonna just go protest now. Feral people are better people. <laughs> right. Um, so basically the point of that is there was like multiple confirmed sightings. So it wasn't you know, corroborated like, hey, this is an actual thing and not like just some. Because yeah. the thing you also find when you look into feral children is there's a lot of bullshit stories out there, too. In fact, some of these that I'm reading are probably those. But a lot of them are not. They're documented, you know, actual true cases, too. So you you get to decide, listener, which ones you choose to believe and which ones you don't. Because I did not mark the ones that <laughs> seemed more uh, backed up than others. Anyway, after witnessing a girl eating a slain goat, um, the alarmed villagers mounted a search for her and eventually tracked and captured her. While in captivity, she understandably howled and screamed like a fucking wolf, which allegedly attracted the attention of the pack, which then came charging into town as if to rescue the girl. To which the villagers were like, fuck, we don't, yeah. <laughs> we didn't want this. Like, I can't think of anything more terrifying than like a pack of wolves, like mm -hmm. being like, fuck you. Yeah, this is one of ours. It's like, well, fuck me. The girl managed to escape and was not seen again until 1852, which would have been seven years later, when a hunter reportedly came across her near a stream, suckling two young wolf pups, which sounds too fucking weird and sexually and gross. Like, I'm going to choose to not ag not acknowledge this part of the story as actual events. I'm going to um, say it's the only part that's true. I don't know that wolves physically could breastfeed off of a human woman, because I think that the parts are like... Why not? not? I don't know. Maybe they could. I <laughs> And again, the internet's probably full of videos confirming the possibility of that. Yeah, just I'm not going just to Google your it. your feeble mind doesn't want it to be true doesn't mean... That's totally believable to me. But uh, when she was spotted, she scooped up the pups and ran off into the woods or jungle or whatever it is there and was... Never seen again. This girl probably has the best name of all the feral children, or at least the best name of the ones I'm talking about, because she's now referred to as the Wolf Girl of Dever Devil's River, um, which is pretty badass, because most of these are just called Monkey Boy or, yeah. like, Scandinavian all Wolf goose, Kid. They're all Goosebumps titles. Yeah. Um, so she's got a pretty badass name. Although the funny thing is, when I googled... That name, to like verify the story, 99% of the returns were about this story, and one was about a legend that was clearly this story taken, but placed in Georgia. And it's like, yeah. yeah. I, love okay. that. I love that you're trying to verify stories. Like, I'll do the same, but it's in reverse, where it's like, mm. I can have 15 sources tell me it's not true, and I just need one to say, it. yeah, it's good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, when I say verify, I'm trying to make myself sound like a researcher. What it actually was is her story. Like most of these came from a listicle, and her story is one of the more interesting ones. So I was actually just looking for more information to flesh it out instead of just like Wolf Girl in Mexico, you yeah. know. Um, so apparently it's Wolf Girl in Mexico, unless you're in Georgia and your boring ass like Georgian life needs to steal somebody else's. <laughs> <laughs> story um so anyway i think a lot of the times we look at these kind of stories and think it's curious that these legends and or actual stories allegedly happened like a long time ago and in the modern world once we have modern communication and technology and everybody has cameras and whatever they all disappear kind of like how the ufo thing like it still happens but that clearly dropped off as now people like 
have cameras and stuff. And it's like, yeah, there's still no good proof of Bigfoot. But good news for you listeners today. We are Bigfoot here. Even in this day and age, children still get horrifically abused, neglected, and abandoned. So, like, that's still a thing. Yeah. So, lucky us. Um, no joke. So I was, like, on a hike and, like, a fucking feral kid came at me. That would be the scariest fucking shit of my life. Yeah, that's one of those situations that I just don't want to happen because yeah, I'm not a, sure I would do the honorable thing. <laughs> like, no, not at all. <laughs> now, I don't say that like I would stamp the child to death or something, but I, I think in real life there's a good chance that I would pretend I didn't see the kid and just keep walking. <laughs> Maybe call the authorities later and be like, hey, there's some naked kid running around in these woods. You might want to go check that out. Yeah. Um, I was just Trying like- to like – Corner the kid? I I don't know. No. Um, That's what I'm saying. You gotta carry a big note with you. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of guys. I'm, again, I'm in rural Ohio. They go, you go in the woods, you take a gun, and I like that. Yours is you go in the woods, you take a big net. Yeah, like and I'm way the fuck more likely to do yours than to carry a gun into the woods, unless I'm specifically like searching for something to shoot. Yeah. Um, you can say I'm not saying you can't take a gun. I'm just saying you're gonna need that net. You net, might not yeah. need the gun. There's never a time where you're hiking where you can't use your net. Yeah, because at the very least, if you don't come across anything dangerous, you turn it into a fucking hammock. And then you're living your best life if you're lounging in a hammock in the woods. That's like... Yeah, well, or just catch something that's not dangerous. Like yeah. a, like a person behind you. <laughs> I was going to say a tree, but <laughs> you're, you're like, God damn it, I keep trying to hike by myself and you keep following yeah, me. Yeah. Net. You, you gotta yell. There's net. three net. different paths. Take another path. You gotta yell net. We're big net as you yeah. throw the big net. Yeah, it's like, like it's like your Street Fighter Hadouken. Some big net. <laughs> I throw. I, I, throw I throw it the same way. <laughs> just like a big hits them net. as a, a balled up net just hits them and falls to the ground, and they're <laughs> yeah. like, cops are like, "What's going on here? A big net." <laughs> uh, <laughs> I love that image. Anyway, so yeah, this I do have modern stories of feral children, um, but I'm going to start with a semi-modern. In 1920, near Mindapur, India, two girls were discovered living with wolves. So we get a twofer with this one. One was approximately, <coughs> excuse me, 18 months old, and the other approximately eight years old. So because of the age difference, but both having the same, like, complete lack of communication and impairments of being trying to, like, talk communication. And um, one of the things I don't I haven't really mentioned it. I got into it at the other ones. Like, they literally walk around on all, all fours. And some of them can be taught to walk upright after, like, years. Mm-hmm. And some of them not, can never learn to walk upright. So, like, my point is the eight-year-old was clearly living with wolves a lot longer than 18 months. Just imagine, like, to be eight years old and, like, what you had to do to earn their respect. <laughs> yeah, especially wolves, because there's other animals in my stories here, um, I think. I don't remember at this point if I've got to. Mostly they've been wolves. Um, but there's other animals that we'll talk about. But the wolves seem the hardest to impress and get into their pack, because you'd think that the wolf's initial instinct would be, let's fucking eat this thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, like, I want to know what wolf in that pack is like, hey, 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 there's a long game here. <laughs> we can lead all the wolves. Yeah. Uh, anyway, because of the age difference, but both having the same, like, feral learning from the wolves, uh, it's assumed that they're not related girls. It's that, rather, this pack took in two separate children, <laughs> and then we're raising them both, which is... Interesting to me. Again, we're getting back to the what the fuck's going on when there's two kids abandoned into the woods. They get, like, close enough proximity that the same fucking wolf pack's like, God damn it, another kid? Well, bring it in. We can't let it die. Um, The girls were eventually named Amala and Kamala because you can't, again, spend too much time thinking about yes, these we things. Get this out of the way. Uh, they wound up at an orphanage, of course. 
One version of their story says they were brought there by a man who lived on the outskirts of the jungle who, after discovering them in the wolf den, had brought them home and kept them in a cage for months as he tried to teach them like to act like humans, and then when that failed, brought them to the orphanage. So it sounds more like some pervert man found two young girls in the woods and were like, ha, ah, hey, hey. And then when it turned out that they were fucking like feral wolf people that would scratch and bite and claw and howl at you if you got anywhere close to him, he's like, well, this won't suit my particular needs. Yeah. Um, and then dumped them off. Um, the girls retained their wolf-like tendencies. Like I said, they would bite and scratch anyone that tried to feed or approach them. They refused to wear clothes. They couldn't speak. They would howl at night, etc. Uh, walk around on all fours. Um, Amila or Amala, the youngest one, died in 1921, so just a year after getting to the orphanage of a kidney infection. But apparently, after she died, the older one, Kamala, became more approachable, which seems like it would be the opposite. Uh, to me, but well, you know, I, I she, could say it uh, like you know, if maybe part of maybe that she feral was like in nature. protection mode, yeah, 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 like if like you feel you had to protect your, you know, only especially relative. if it was clear that she got sick and died, and not like that they killed her or something, yeah. um, or you're just finally like this raw shit is gross. Yeah, maybe that's what gave her the kidney uh, infection. Yeah, I just want a real fucking meal. Uh, she did eventually learn to walk upright um, a little, though. It said that she often reverted to moving on all fours if she had to move, like, quickly. Um, which is weird to me, too, because it, it means they, they literally learn to move faster on all fours. And maybe it's, again, being 41 years old. If I'm on all fours, I'm not fucking going hardly anywhere. Like, it's... <laughs> I think my three-month-old can crawl faster than me, and she can't crawl yet. Um, but anyway... Uh, she did learn a few words. However, she would contract tuberculosis and die in 1929. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, Mission successful. Yes, about age 16, if I'm doing my math right. Um, turns out civilized life in an orphanage in India in the early 1900s wasn't that much safer uh, from disease than living in the fucking woods with wolves. Um I guess it's the moral of that story. And again, I guess I should, I said in India, American orphanages were not any better. Um, so I don't want to make this sound like Bullshit. a nationalist thing. <laughs> these are, these are made with oak. These are, <laughs> these are good goddamn orphanages. You take them. Well, back. I guess the difference is like, they sounded like disease rife places where kids died early. Ours were places where they got abused and killed early. No, so, like, that's the and thing. Then, Our orphanage is, like, we didn't have that many. What we did was just abuse kids through school. It, well, I don't know. We've had a couple stories. And then Canada was real bad for it, too. And, of course, especially with the indigenous, uh, you, we're still finding new horrific stories about that, where kids by the hundreds were killed and buried in unmarked graves so anyway my point is when i say you know our orphanage is in india in 1920 i guess i could leave out the in india part um i don't want to pick on them <laughs> this is what i'm getting at but these girls did not live very long in i'm gonna say in captivity because again i've lived enough to learn that living in civilization is actually living in captivity and living feral is living free yeah. like you said feral is better helicopter your balls around in that brisk mountain air right while howling at the moon yeah and then a bear shows up and then you realize i need help I need well it depends now. it depends because if you're already with a wolf pack you're fucked if you're not apparently the bear will take you in and raise you as one of its own unless you're an adult then they just fucking kill you yeah, then because they, then they, then they smell adult, bitch <laughs> Adult humans are insufferable regardless of the species. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so You're just that's way the moral too there. I like the idea that uh, humans are just way too annoying for bears to tolerate. Yeah, like like young children, anybody can dig a young it's, child. Apparently, it's not like a it's threat. like yeah, it's not we need food. to protect this. We need to protect this thing. Provide food and shelter. As soon as we become like not even adult, like adolescent, teen, or whatever, you're fucked because yeah. everything's like fuck this thing. It's an asshole. Um, God, it's, and they're usually this thing is still looking at its phone. <laughs> Fucking talk to me. Uh, so while most of these stories I'm talking about are likely exaggerated, although, like I said, a lot of them like are actually documented. They're 
they fucking happened, but they're probably exaggerated like all these stories are. Um, this one in particular tends to be doubted by most people because there's a there's multiple like written accounts of these two girls, but they all vary like wildly, or as our famous ex president would say, bigly. Um, from one another, like, and major details too. So it's not just like, oh, you know, one was called this and no, they were called that. It's like, there's a lot of like interpretation. And there's the, the actual suspicion is that this was a story made up by this orphanage to get attention. Um, cause apparently that was one way I get, you know, what, what is it? No, uh, no publicity is bad publicity, which is not true at all, but, um, publicity is fun publicity. I guess the uh, <laughs> the madman of the t- or admin of the time thought the best way to advertise your orphanage is to say we've got two wolf girls living here, and everybody be like, "That's where I want to take the kid that I don't want." Um. Anyway, in 1991, so way more recently, a Ukrainian girl by the name of Oksana Malaya was found living in a kennel among a number of dogs because her fucking piece of shit abusive mother had kept her in there from age three until she was discovered by authorities at age eight. So for five years, starting from a very young age, it was you living here with the fucking dogs. <laughs> um, she was unable to speak, uh, instead only like barking and making other dog sounds. Uh, and she did move around on all fours. Fortunately, and likely due to having at least some exposure to humans, so like instead of living out in the wild with just animals, she still had her piece of shit mom there. Uh, Exana was eventually able to learn to speak. Uh, it's reported that she does have, you know, some pretty good cognitive impairment because apparently if you don't teach your kids stuff in that age where they're the most like what? in learning mode, are, you miss your window, <laughs> like, I'm just, which uh, is very true because you can't teach me shit anymore. I'm like, just imagining like a sitcom scenario where it's like the girl and her real mom and her dog mom have to all coexist. Exist, yeah. yeah and like the dog, t- like the dog, my mom, two moms, but one's a dog. Yeah, yeah, and the dog mom's always like, "You're doing it wrong." <laughs> um, but she is. The article said now in her 20s, but given that she was found at age eight in 1991, now she's older than that. Um, so the article had to be written in the like early to or sometime in the 2000s. Um, anyway, she did have a job and a boyfriend and lived on her own. So unlike a lot of these other stories, like she was able to kind of get re acclimated to living like a person and not a dog. Um, which makes hers a little less sad than basically all the stories I'm telling today. But that's a very low bar when a story is like, yeah, her mom completely abused her and treated her like a dog for five years, literally keeping her in a cage and not letting her out. And that's the happy story we're getting tonight. Um, <laughs> whatever. The field at the shows. age. Yeah, yeah. At the age of two or three, a Ugandan boy by the name of John Sabunya witnessed his father brutally murder his mother, which is a great thing to witness as a toddler. Sets you on the right path for life. Mm -hmm. Traumatized and terrified, he fled into the jungle, which was probably the correct move. Uh, A year or two later, in uh, 1991, so the same time that uh, the Ukrainian dog girl, (laughs) Oksana, was found... Uh, a woman collecting firewood came across a pack of monkeys and noticed one that seemed different. Upon closer inspection, she realized, of course, that that was not a monkey. It was, in fact, the four-ish-year-old boy, John, living with these monkeys. Um, though he only lived among the monkeys for about 18 months or so, it, nobody knows for sure. Um, that's one of the problems with... <laughs> well, the problem's the wrong word. That's one of the... Um, kind of consequences of growing up as a feral young child is Very your timely. backstory gets lost yeah. right i, I was um, gonna say though that's that's probably better than like you know some like beasts of no nation shit where like the kid's family gets like murdered in like a civil war and he runs off into the jungle and gets like picked up by a revolution army which 
is like yeah because the monkeys abusive. are yeah the monkeys are literally just trying to teach him to survive like not yeah. like indoctrinate him into some yeah extremist belief um but and his situation is really unique uh, from uh, from these stories for a couple reasons um a, like I said, he didn't live with the monkeys that long, but he, because of his age at the time, like it was still during one of the most like formative times in a child's life. Mm -hmm. So he did clearly like display a number of like traits he picked up from the monkeys. Um, like his knees were like worn almost white because he'd walk around on all fours. Um, that's very common. Uh, his body was hairier than average, which sounds weird to say, but. Uh, and I started it off with the hairy naked boy um, being seen or one of them. Um, apparently, uh, I found an article that kind of went into the more scientific stuff, and then I skimmed it because, <laughs> okay. this, yeah, we don't get paid for this shit, <laughs> right? <laughs> but apparently, mm. like that is one of the effects of living feral is that the their bodies tend to like become hairier than average, which is interesting to me. But it makes sense because you then have to acclimate to like very wildly varying temperatures and stuff uh and you don't have a store to go get new clothes at um and he also like e even like to this day when you talk to him or when he's in interviews he like won't make eye contact with people which i won't either because <laughs> it's fucking awkward yeah. um but he does it in the way that like animal kingdom does it like if you know much about dog i know you're a dog person one of the things that i own dogs you learn... they're not my we're not cool though yeah well yeah but <laughs> my dog's so you the shit out. maybe you may or may not know this but one of the things that i've learned about like when you, you're approaching a um dog that you're not familiar with it's not great to stare them in the eyes because in nature, most animals, that's like a, uh, I want to fight, like, kind of dominance type thing. Um, and he clearly, and monkeys I, very much I, I do, do that. that. I do that, but yeah. I do want to fight. Uh, <laughs> right. My looking down is to, like, throw you off so that you think I'm meek and mild. And then when the, yeah. the gloves are thrown, I'm going to fucking get my ass kicked. I actually I have, like, a, I'm like the mayor in Nightmare Before Christmas. So I got, like, a little face on the back of my head. <laughs> so just every animal always feels like I'm staring them down no matter what. No, that's kind of believable. I'm going to, that's canon now. Okay. It's actually, like, that would actually be helpful with, like, jungle cats. Mm -hmm. Because they're kind of the opposite. They want you to turn your back to them. And then they want to fucking pounce your shit. Yeah, that's true. You you do got to know your animals because some of them you do want to look at. <laughs> and, and I'd imagine bears, if you're going to go with that technique of make yourself big and yell, you'd want eye contact. I think I'd probably and, go and with I've, the... I've heard that like if you look a gorilla in the eye, it's bad. But I've also seen so many videos where you're, like, you're not looking at the gorilla and they fucking linebacker charge the goddamn case. And yeah, the key, uh, I think, with gorillas, me being the naturist, outdoorsy man that I am, is to stay the fuck away from gorillas. <laughs> <laughs> They're terrifying. They're, They're huge and strong as fuck. Yeah. And and they can go from, oh, look, this gorilla is cute, and it's like wants to like communicate with me to, I'm going to just rip you to pieces, yeah, this literally. Is, this guy kind of looks like us. And then, like, hey, wait, why is he as, as strong as the Hulk? <laughs> um. But one of the more interesting aspects of John's story is that he was old enough when he fled that he actually, like, has some vague memories of the first time the monkeys approached him in the jungle. And, like, they like, came up and were offering him, like, roots LSD. and sweet potatoes. And, yeah, of course. It's like, like hey, first, first one's free, man. Welcome to um, the jungle, brother. And because, like, his time in the wild was relatively short, uh, and he was found at a relatively young age still, he doesn't have the same like cognitive impairments that most of the kids on this list do. Uh, like the article in this, I think is kind of patronizing, but it's like, not only did he learn to speak, um, which is great because it means he could share his memories of the jungle and probably rat out his fucking murdering dad. Um, but he became quite the singer and it's like, I don't know why I should not believe that. It's like, if you can learn to speak, you can probably learn to sing. Uh, um, I, but think, he traveled... I think if you're you like you get accustomed to like animal sounds, you're probably you're probably better at you it. You probably yeah. have more vocal range. Yeah, probably. I've like all like all I... the all human languages is like 
drill dr- like dragging sounds down to like their most monotonous thing and that's how this podcast happened is right <laughs> it's like two guys who keep the same tone for hours hours yeah, that's what i was gonna say like i play guitar and i try to sing but i've got the vocal range of like maybe like ben stein if he stubbed his toe like a little more than that like well, shtick that he does yeah. but but still like i can cover like an octave and a half on the keyboard yeah. and then it goes to shit um and an octave and a half is probably being generous, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, but yeah, he became a singer and was uh, traveling and performing nationally with the Pearl of Africa Children's Choir. So, like, he did all right for being raised by monkeys for 18 months. Yeah. Although it talked about, like, when they first tried to reintroduce him to, like, cooked food, like, that went fucking poorly. Mm. Um, and they talked about, like, finding, I mean, pulling, like, four foot long tapeworms from him. Um, that, which sounds that's embarrassing, gross. right? That sucks. Um, and it, it, which is kind of what leads. Uh, How do you most get to the... be picky about food? Yeah. He wasn't picky. It wasn't that. It was like his stomach couldn't handle it. Like oh. it's that thing. Like if you've not eaten, I, I've, I've I'm heard just saying. Like, like at that point, that tapeworm's calling the shot. Yeah. Well, and that's what they say. They say in his case, you know, some of these were like, "Oh, this kid lived for like." 13 years with animals they're like yeah he if he had gone another couple months he probably would have died because he was not in great shape but they kept him alive enough for this woman to find him i guess um so that's just like a handful of accounts of feral children though the technical term is apparently isolates which i don't like because isolates sounds like you or me where you do it on fucking purpose um it sounds like a good thing to me well yeah that too like yeah, I'm gonna. I'm going out for the weekend to isolates. It's like one of those drug terms that exists that nobody that does drugs has ever said. It's only used by scientists talking about the drugs. Yeah. Parents like, trying to talk to their kids who don't want to talk to them. That is a barbiturate. Yeah. Like nobody that does barbiturate says barbiturate. Barbiturate wow. is he's an old pirate captain, captain <laughs> barbiturate. He was one of my favorite because that fucker was, you, you never knew what he was going to do next. He was all <laughs> over the place. Um, it's so like a getting back to- Captain Crunch. <laughs> By, hey, kids, I try a nice big bowl uh, of barbiturates. Uh, I, have a, I have a barbiture bowl. <laughs> a barbiture bowl. <laughs> I've got some customers that I think take those. Yeah, hell yeah. Um, so to get back to Dina, uh, the, the one we started with there in India, once he was adopted by the orphanage, he struggled to assimilate. That's very common with most of these, most of these kids, like you can tell they like, want to say, fuck this and get back into the, the wild. Yeah. <laughs> like they, pre- they prefer it. Um, well, I mean, in a jungle book, like the kid didn't want to go back until he saw like a hot chick. And right. He's like, oh, fuck, fuck this, <laughs> fuck these, fuck this bear, fuck that panther. Well, from what I remember, even then, he kind of like tried to talk her into coming into the woods with him. Like, <laughs> uh, uh, no, I only know the Disney movie, but in the Disney movie, he literally just like a wooga, and then just like goes <laughs> off into the village, and like the animals are like, kind of like, what the fuck? Yeah, we saved your life, bitch. Yeah, fuck you. <laughs> Um, Dina did, he struggled, but he did eventually learn to walk upright and learn to understand spoken language, but it was never able to actually speak it. But apparently there was one very human trait that he took to almost immediately. He became an avid smoker, <laughs> smoking like two or three packs a day. I think they said. If you, if you ever needed factual proof that it's cool, mm-hmm. someone with no context Saw but the coolest said, would have been if yeah. they just gave him a bunch of cigarettes or just like left them as tribute, but let him go live back with the wolves. Yeah. Cause then you'd have a wolf man living with wolves smoking that I guarantee he would have been able to teach the rest of the wolves how to smoke. Yeah. Like, I was going to say like a pack of wolves around you fucking pack. And, one of, and one of them dramatically like flicks his cigarette down, stomps it out. <laughs> Dude, that yeah. is pants shitting scary. 
you disembowel yourself for him. You're like, sorry, sir, I'll take care of this. Yeah. Don't don't bother dirtying your claws. Yeah. Um, but Dina also died at relatively young at the age of 35 after contracting tuberculosis. So, man, we're like, good at fucking pulling people out of shit and giving them TB. Right. <laughs> and just like the number of stories we've done. Where, like, not just, like, this this one today, we've talked about a lot of people in history that have died of fucking tuberculosis. Yeah. This and every kid, time it makes me mad Arthur because Morgan. it... Right, it oh. brings me back to Arthur Morgan. And it's like, these people, I'm like, that's kind of sad, but Arthur Morgan was fucking tragic. <laughs> like, it still makes me mad what happened to him, even though it was a brilliant ending. Like, it was great. And I give Rockstar a lot of credit for, like, for doing that. Um... It's it still fucking like, makes me it's mad. Just it still a, sucks. Life that motherfucker led, and then, right, you know, that's how and the it. badass things that he did, and then he dies of a disease. He dies a hero. So for, sorry for if you've not TV, played. But sorry if you've not played that game yet. But uh, that's but it's, it's been, it's out, been forever. out for a very yeah. yeah. You can't trust every, us to keep that sacred. Like nope. It's one of my fucking favorite stories ever. I'm never gonna be able to shut up about it. Plus, there's only one person I know for sure that listens to basically all of our episodes, and he's a huge fucking Red Dead 2 fan, so mm-hmm. I know he already knows the ending, and I'm not worried about spoiling mm-hmm. that. So, this was but my, that's my story. We're going to get an email. It's like, this was my first episode, and you ruined the I had just, game. <laughs> I just started playing it, <laughs> I was, fuckers. That was five hours in. Quit now, because the rest of that game is trash. It's the be- no. the first five hours and the ending are good. Technically, but... there are multiple endings, so you can... Yeah, but I I, I kind of think that thing and happens. And that is not... That isn't even the ending, so... Well, no. Yeah, so, yeah. 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 It, it's a it's a occurrence in the game, yeah. so sorry for spoiling the game that The game is still happening now. I can that's the thing that, like I said, I give him a lot of credit for like killing off the main character that you've just spent hours with, but I guess he deserves even more credit for then continuing the story as his corpse. Yeah, like, like not even I, a zombie. I like, I thought the thriller just... dance was really in poor taste because it was <laughs> such a dramatic. <laughs> Yeah, especially since it was like he was a puppet and it was the guy with a player piano. Like it just seems, yeah. And I don't know. They changed his voice actor to fucking Denzel Washington for some reason. Was... <laughs> that would be fantastic. <laughs> just, I'm Arthur I wanna, Now I want a game that about like three or four times throughout its like eighty hour story just randomly changes your protagonist voice actor, but That's... doesn't address it at all. <laughs> In the that, game, was, like... that was kind of what happened with Insomniac's Spider-Man game. They uh, they did a big update and changed the character model of Spider-Man. And they said it was like to match the voice actor. It's really to make him look more like Tom Holland. And <laughs> it, it, th- it throws fucking everything off. It's so weird. Yeah. And if you were like in I... the middle of your game... And he came back and Spider-Man looked fucking different. (laughs) (laughs) Who are you? I'm just some guy that found this. I'm Peter Parker. (coughs) No, this house belongs to the guy that killed Peter Parker. Uh, Anyway, so that's my story. I don't have more. I just a handful of feral children's stories I thought was interesting because it's one of those things that you kind of heard about them before but i never thought much of it and then it's like there's a shitload of occurrences where people are just like go fucking live in the woods kids yeah and yeah only and there's only one version where the kids find a candy cottage and that doesn't turn out great it turns out turns out if you're a kid in the woods it's way better to find a pack of wolves than it is to to you (laughs) find a pack of wolves give them a pack of smokes and let nature take its course of course yeah just be ready for that Sm- tuberculosis. Smoke, that's smoke out that tapeworm. <laughs> right. Right. That was probably so. like an Old West fucking cure-all. It's like any, oh, whiskey. Pa- any parasite you got in you, just you guys got to smoke up. Yeah, leeches, cigarettes, and whiskey were like the cure to everything, which yeah. is why it was a much better time back then. Minus the leeches. I'm not a fan of... Leeches are gross. Like... They still like some places still do that, and I don't mean places like in the world. I mean like here down the street. 
They're right. There's <laughs> clinics you can go to where they'll do a good bloodletting with leeches. I was like, fuck, those uh, things are. I'm sure my like that sounds like some shit my dad would recommend. Yeah, and I'm like. Yeah. Well, my thing is, like, if getting rid of, like, tainted blood is, like, good, it's like, great, get a fucking syringe. I don't need goddamn leeches mm. <laughs> on me. That's gross. I don't need to make friends along the way. Uh, but uh, anyway, okay, what do dope. I know? Uh, Clearly nothing. That's why that's the, the whole premise of the show. Because society, is, the point is society has failed. Go, go live in the woods. Right. Um, it, it works out. But again... It's too late for us. If you have a child, just dump it in the woods. Yeah. Like, don't worry. It'll turn out okay. If if the kid didn't laugh and clap while you played this episode for him, dump him in the woods. They'll, Try again. Yeah, they'll they'll find a home out there, and you can get the correct kid. Trust me, the trying again part's the fun part. Not the, you know, let the wolves raise your kids. Just, yeah. They'll do better. Uh, yeah, yeah, probably. The kid will get a fucking choir career, apparently. Well, I mean, I, I I get that my kids, my oldest is only four, but she can't fucking kill a goat with her bare hands. That's not true. She probably could. It's it's crazy what kids can do. Yeah. <laughs> Under I asked, I still underestimate her all the time, and then it's like, oh, you just disassembled my car, <laughs> like <laughs> that's great. Now, daddy can't go anywhere. Uh, all right. Well, uh, yeah. Throw your kids away. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> <laughs>